what an absolutely horrible day. What is going on boys and welcome back to the channel with Exhausted. So as you can see in that clip, the weather is absolutely terrible. What my plans were, were to crack on outside with the MX-5 Turbo build, but we can't do much outside at the moment because of the weather. And what's an absolute nightmare, it's meant to rain heavily for the next four days. So that is absolutely terrible. But what I thought, we can crack on with the video and almost do a couple of bits which we don't need directly on, we don't need to be uh, like at the car almost. We can crack on with that inside and we can get some content filmed for you boys. So without no further ado boys, let's go. So guys, in today's video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the IAT sensor into the intercooler piping on the cold side of the intercooler. If you saw my ME221 install video, which was one of the more recent videos, what we did is we did everything but the IAT sensor and that's because we couldn't run the car yet and just loads of other complications but now we're, in a, we're at a point where we can install that so we're going to be installing that into the intercooler piping and attaching it down and what we're also going to be doing is on another part of the intercooler piping is we're going to be attaching the fitting for the idle control so that comes off the stock intake but we need to basically keep that in order so the car knows how to idle in essence so what we're going to be doing, we can crack on with installing both of those things inside and since it's raining, it'll take a while to dry and you'll get to see what I mean by dry in a second. So yeah, let's get to the install. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move the camera over here so you can see what I'm doing a lot in a lot more detail with my hands. So you may not be able to see me as well, but all that matters is you can see what's actually going on so you can do this at home and so you guys are learning. So guys, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing our IAT sensor into the intercooler piping. Now I've already drilled and tapped an M12 by 1.5 hole into this intercooler pipe and the reason I've done that and I'm not showing you is for the idle control we're going to be drilling and tapping it so I'm going to show you how to do it on that one I didn't think there was any point me repeating myself twice so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing this IAT into the pipe what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing the IAT into this intercooler piping using some red thread locker which hopefully will not unscrew after this and we're also going to be using some JB weld around the outside to ensure that we've got an airtight finish and there's no boost leaks on this part of the intercooler piping. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, open this up and take out our IAT and as you guys can see this screws once I line it up oh. this screws directly into here nice and easy like that which is the whole point of tapping it, so we've got that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open our red thread locker. Which we've got right here. Crack this open. And that's already ready like that. So we're going to go ahead and put this on the thread. Now because this thread is longer than the actual tapped bit, I'm going to go ahead and try to put it on the inside, or just around the top of this actually, because that will be a lot easier. So if we put a little dollop on here, Now we've got a tiny bit of red thread locker on there, we're going to go ahead and just basically wind this into here, not forgetting to have our washer, which we're just going to place on there. So we're going to go ahead and wind this into the hole and just have that nicely tightened down into place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a socket for this or a spanner so we can tighten that down perfectly and then we can go ahead and attach on some JB Weld. So to tighten this one is a 19. And we're just going to tighten that a bit more. As you can see, there's still a little bit to tighten on there. And we don't want to do this too tight because we don't want to strip any threads because this is only aluminium. So that is perfect right there. And that's basically just going to take a little while to dry. Whilst that's dry, we're going to go around here with some JB Weld. So guys, the JB Weld comes in the actual weld and a hardener just to basically harden them up and you want to mix these in a one-to-one -one mixture which means the exact same amount of each one. You want to mix it on a non-porous surface so here I've got my Top Gear magazine, an old Top Gear magazine which we're going to flip over and do it on the back of here. So the only reason for that is so that it doesn't soak into the, into the actual cover. So we're going to get these and pop them open. Then we're going to go ahead and try as neatly as possible work this into here. Mm -hmm. 
what we're doing is we're pushing it into the gaps around here, just forcing it in. Now don't worry about this being messy because I'm going to clean this up before it dries. So we've got that just like that, as you can see, that's completely covered. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clean this up. So guys, to clean this up, what I'm going to be using is just a standard bit of kitchen towel which you can find lying around your house. And we are just going to wipe it off around here so you can't see all of these kind of smudgy bits and it just looks a bit better. Just to point out this part you definitely don't need to do. It will be just as strong without it obviously, but I mean I'm very much, I very much care about things appearance and I want it to look nice. So we're going to try and make this as nice as possible. So guys, if you can see on there, you can't really see, apart from just around the very edge that we put the JB World on there. We're going to allow this to dry for 24 hours, and then if I decide we can put on some more, or we should put on some more, we're going to go ahead and put some more of that stuff on tomorrow. So that's pretty much in there, so we're just going to literally leave that to sit. So guys, now for the idle control. So we've got a little dot here, which is exactly where we want to attach it in. So we're going to drill and tap right there. So we're going to start off with a centre punch. Just like that, so we've got a lovely hole to start with. And then we're going to go ahead and drill a slightly smaller hole. And then our 9 16th inch drill bit. We're going to use that to drill through it and make the final hole. So we've now got our 9 16th drill bit. So we're literally just going to go ahead, place it in the exact same hole and just drill through with this one. So we're going to go ahead, get our tap and our spanner, place this in here, and start trying to twist it in. So we're going to back this out and see if this fits in. So now guys, we're going to pull these to one side and go ahead and thread locker it in in the exact same way we did with the other one. So I'm going to put this into a little time lapse. See so you guys know what to do. So lads, now we have that one back on and all nicely cleaned up. We're going to leave both of these to dry till tomorrow and then apply one more layer to be on the safe side as I'd rather use too much JB Weld and have boost leaks and have to put it all apart and do it again. So we may as well be on the safe side. We've got time to wait until the manifold and downpipe comes, so why not? So it's the following morning and our JB Weld has all hardened up and there are no leaks anywhere. So that is perfect. I've tested this one with water, so I ran water through it and held both sides. So basically blocked off one end, filled it up with water from that side and no water leaks out of there. So we know that's all good to go. And this one I can't test with water, but from my eyes it looks pretty good. So, yeah, the reason I can't test that before them is because it's obviously it's a sensor and I don't want to mess it up. So, that's perfect. So now we're ready to install these onto the car. So guys, I've put this on. There's a 90 degree fitting here, which is going straight down. And it's connecting to our pipe with the IAT sensor on there. And then we've got this one, which is going to come up and join up with it, hopefully. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull this off and join them all together. So guys, I've marked this where we're going to cut. So we're going to go ahead and cut these. This can be cut with scissors, which makes our life a lot easier. Just snip that off to the required length. We've got a spare bit of hose there. And then we're just going to go ahead and plug that right into the port where we put it on. We're going to need hose clamps for this, but I haven't got any of the correct size. So for the time being, I'm just going to plug it in and leave it as that. But we will buy some hose clamps to clamp it on to ensure it doesn't come off under boost pressure. So using this wiring harness we made, we can just go ahead and plug this straight in. And that's plugged in the IAT sensor to the, that location. And we're going to feed these all the way around to the other side of the engine bay. So yeah, that's the end of today's episode, guys. Just to give you an overview of what we did, is we fabricated up the rest of the cold side of the intercooler piping as well as attaching in the IAT sensor and idle control. So now the car knows how to idle basically and it knows the intake temperature of the air which is essential for a turbo car and for the ECU to know that. In the next episode what we're going to be doing is, well to be quite honest I don't know exactly what we're going to be doing, it depends what parts arrive first. All we've got left to do is attach the turbo manifold and down puck all into the car. Obviously clock the turbo so the turbo's at the right orientation so that we'll 
feed is on top and the oil drains on the bottom. Attaching our wideband oxygen sensor and calibrate that so the ECU also knows that also knows that. And we've got to do a bit of wiring into the ECU as well for that. A little bit of wiring for gauges, that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, we haven't got much left to do now, guys. And the car will be running, hopefully. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And subscribe down below for more awesome, exhausted content. And until the next one, guys, adios.